Hello everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I am going to be talking to you about the trends that need to go and the things that potentially I don't personally love. Please take this with a pinch of salt. You do not need to make drastic changes to your home. I'm not telling you to throw things out. I'm just telling you what my personal preferences are and what I think from a trend perspective is probably a little dated. Okay, so the first thing I really don't like to see, and it's probably mostly from a comfort perspective, is leather sofas. I am so sorry to any of you guys who still have leather sofas. And I've had leather sofas in the past. I've had beautiful leather chairs in the past. There is nothing wrong with some nice sort of atmospheric feeling leather, but leather sofas in your living room unless you are going for that kind of library whiskey bar look please stay away from them it might look really nice on a traditional chair or even a funky chair but with a little touch of leather love it great just as an accent but please don't go overboard with the leather in a room i always feel like it should be a touch in a room as opposed to you know just some big leather clad room i have seen libraries offices just fully leathered out and and to be honest with you, I just think it's overkill and it's overdone and dated. But that doesn't mean I don't love an accent here and there in leather. And I love a leather buckle. I love some leather look. I even don't mind the way it wears, you know, to give it that sort of authentic feel. But I think it needs to be done carefully and properly. So please just don't go and buy yourself big leather sofas. It feels very office-like. The next trend I think has to go, if it hasn't already, is the ultra modern look. Now, I have never seen an ultra modern looking interior that feels particularly comfortable. I think following lockdown, we all understand the value and the benefit in living well, in you know home comfort, in really interiors being a part of an added area of quality of life. So I think if you are going to go for your comfort, your quality of life, quality of home, then ultra modern isn't gonna do anything for you. It's so sterile looking. I either find it's overly sort of sterile and white or particularly uncomfortable looking and just generally quite cold. And I think everything about home should be the opposite of that, should be warm and inviting and comfortable. And I think, you know, that ultra modern look just needs to go. Thirdly, and I know this looks great on Instagram, great on YouTube, but please, the homes that are just layers of white on white are great for a picture but they are impossible to live in. You know, there's just no depth. It's literally the same shade of white and people are doing up their homes literally to take pictures for Instagram only. Now I take pictures of my home for Instagram. I love doing it, I enjoy it, I do it on YouTube. You've probably all seen my home, but it is not one shade of white. I mean, you know, there has to be some, hello. <laughs> Hi Titi. Hi mommy. Yeah, that's what they're there for. Thank you. Literally the one that's showcased for the video. I love a white color. I think, you know, there's so much power in just the coolness and the warmth and the softness of a white. I absolutely love it. But honestly, it does not need to be the only color in a home. So please, could we add some creativity, some texture and some warmth to our homes? Those homes do not feel comfortable to live in. It is very difficult to get a good understanding of a home from a picture or a video even until you really walk in there and you feel the energy. And so, you know, unfortunately, what sometimes may look brilliant in a picture doesn't necessarily feel homely. And I think just watch out for that. If you love white and that's your color and you enjoy living it, then go for it. But I do think there have been a lot of copycat homes based on these white interiors that we see for one snapshot and they aren't always very comfortable to live in. That again does not mean that you can't do it if you love it, but it's just my opinion. Shine. Guys, I love a little bit of shine, but please let's make it a little bit. Gone are the 
days of full-on glitz and shine everywhere. I like high sheen wood and timber, but it's gotta be done right and it's gotta be done carefully, otherwise your interiors end up looking like the interior of a boat, which you know feels very different to, I think, an interior of a home. So do be careful if you like that high sheen look, and hey, it looks great in some places, just be careful about where you put it. You know, it did used to symbolize, I think, the ultimate in luxury, but today, it's not necessarily that high-end look if you have it everywhere it ends up looking a little bit crass and um, not so luxurious and not so elevated let's say that doesn't mean again to say that you can't have it and you shouldn't have it but I think just use it wisely if you are going to have it thoughtless design I think is the worst possible thing and it's something of the past and it must go. I used to really dislike the question about trends and I used to think gosh I hate this question but actually the question I most dislike now is what style is your interior? I mean the style of my interior is about the thought behind the people we're designing for and I think thoughtless interior is the worst thing to see and everybody can improve on it so you know there isn't a sort of formula for everybody but you can really feel the difference between a home that's been thought through for the family it doesn't need to work for everybody but a home that's been thought through for the family is so much more different than a home that has no thought behind it and that clearly every item has just been picked based on an aesthetic or a fabric that someone likes or instead of really thinking it through and putting it together really considering all the people who are living in your home and how they use the space think about who you're designing for even if that is yourself before you design you know we all think we know ourselves really well and so we know how to design for ourselves and we think we know what we find most comfortable and we think we know what we need but actually because you're so accustomed to being yourself you very rarely ask yourself questions about the things that you do and you like and your habits so I think you know get into the habit from an interior design perspective whenever you're going to buy any item of asking yourself who is this for how are they going to use it what is it for am I only buying it because it looks nice but serves no other purpose. And you know what? Some items don't need to serve any other purpose, but think it through before you buy. Another trend I think needs to go is one style. Now, come on people, there are so many styles out there so much to learn from. You know, gone are the days where you fit into one style or another. And yes, you may fit mostly into one style, but let's adapt and develop and pick and choose elements from different styles and different generations that we love. And let's find a way to put that together beautifully. You know, it's like putting together an outfit where you have lots of different elements from lots of different shops. You know, you don't have to buy from one place. You don't have to have one style. You can, you know, lean towards one style but do pull in other styles there is so much out there there's so much to learn from the internet has given us this whole world of cultures and styles and eras and genres that we can learn from let's use it to our advantage and give little nods to different styles and different things within our home if you have good taste which I'm sure you do you can put it together beautifully Okay, I'm gonna have to admit that I stole this idea from I think another video I watched, but I did think, oh my goodness, that is such a great point. And this gentleman was talking about badly planned utility rooms. And I thought, oh my goodness, that's so true. We've come so far from a utility life perspective that we don't need to have badly planned utilities anymore. Think your utility room through. It isn't just something that should look nice. I think because utility rooms have become you know, so popular on social media, everybody wants their utility room to look amazing, which is great. And so such a big bonus and I think it's such a luxury to be able to have a utility room so why not make it look stunning but please think it through you know laundry is one of the biggest things we do in a family along with cooking and many other things so I think you do need to know what your family's requirements are know how many towels you have in the house how much linen will you be washing when you use your utility room where are you storing things do you need an airing cupboard a drying cupboard where should that be do you need to sit down when you're in your utility room because actually you're in 
there for quite a long time and you need some time to rest and don't want to go two floors up. Really think about your utility room. This is another case of sort of sitting down with a pen and paper, maybe on one of your normal laundry duties and saying, okay, this is what I've done today. I'm actually going to write it down so I can figure out what I need to incorporate in there to make my life easier. This should be something that facilitates the way that you live. You know, it's making something that perhaps used to be a chore more enjoyable and more elegant. So, you know, let's sort of progress from that perspective and develop that idea and take it even further and make it absolutely right for you. One trend that I don't really know is going or staying or coming or a little bit of all is fast furniture, much like fast fashion. Now, I think furniture is such a big part of our everyday life and it's great that we have options. It's great that we have cheaper options and more expensive options and something in between. But I really think you can think your furniture through. This is one of the things that is such a problem environmentally and I think we can really consider and think about ways to reuse the items that we have. We can give them away, we can sell them, reuse things, we can reupholster things, we can repaint things. I mean, there are endless DIY methods to reuse products, um, vases, chairs, goodness knows what else, cupboards, repaint things on Instagram and other social media. And I think we can really be clever about the way that we use and reuse items. Please, let's all try to be less about fast furniture. I change my interiors a lot. It's part of you know me trying things out in my home first so that I do my job better and so that I know how to serve my clients better. But I think you know even for us, if I'm not using something that I have and I'm lucky enough not to have to sell it, then I'll give it to a sister, somebody that works with me. And I try to reuse things and reupholster things. I mean, I've reupholstered my sofa about five times possibly. You know, there is still cost involved, there is fabric involved, but you know we do try wherever we can to be more thoughtful about waste when it comes to furniture because it really is something that's quite a large product and quite large ticket items and things that are less easy to dispose of and so I think there are so many big rubbish problems in this world if we can try to be more careful about the way we dispose of furniture then amazing we seem to be creating this massive world problem from an environmental perspective that my daughter tells me about every day and so I want to be part of the effort that tries to cut down on fast anything, but definitely fast furniture. Okay, so I part agree with myself here and I part disagree, but over the top stone, which by the way, I can quite love, depending on where you put it and if it's in a powder room, for example, and if it, there's a touch of it somewhere. But I do not like to see over the top stone in large, vast areas. First of all, it gives me a massive headache. I feel it's such a dated look, but also it's not a long-term look. You know, you are so likely to get bored of it that you have to really be considerate and thoughtful about using a big piece of natural stone somewhere if it's, you know, very, very very wild and very, very loud. I like a bold piece of stone, though, though you wouldn't know it in my kitchen, um, with this very light, plain sort of white top. But actually, I do love a very decorative stone, but I'm just very conscious that I think we used to see a lot of very crazy wild marble in large surfaces, whether that was on countertops or floors or bathrooms. And I think, you know, we do have to think about the fact that you may get bored of something like that. So it may look absolutely incredible when you first see it, and you could totally fall head over heels in love, but be very quick because you can quickly fall in love and quickly fall out of love. You know, my advice is always try something a little bit more pared back so there's longevity in terms of how long you love it for. Again, take that with a pinch of salt. Many of you may have some really dramatic pieces of stone in your homes. You know what? Go for it. If you enjoy it, enjoy it and keep enjoying it. I am just giving you my personal opinion. Lifeless empty coffee tables are something that really bother me. I do not know what it is, but I hate to see a coffee table that's empty. I mean, <laughs> 
the coffee table is there for things to be put on top of it. And there are so many ways to do that. It doesn't mean you've got to spend loads on getting lots of accessories and filling it to the max, which is my preference, but it doesn't have to be yours. But definitely add something on a coffee table, add some interest on there. It could just be a central vase with some faux or real flowers on, or even a plain vase that looks beautiful, that's happy there sitting on its own without anything inside it. But I think, you know, try to be thoughtful about your coffee tables because they do look so plain and so sad when they're sitting there with nothing on them. Of course, you can also fill them up with different heights of coffee table books if you don't have any other ideas, and that will do. You could even add a fruit bowl on your coffee table. I mean, there is so much inspiration on the social media pages and online generally, so there are no excuses. Finally, I want to say thank you again. Please take my advice with a pinch of salt. It is only my opinion. And you know, I'm sure if you were to do all of those things that I told you, other than maybe the fast fashion and the thoughtless design, that you know, your home is still gonna look really, really beautiful. Please don't go out and get rid of anything. The whole point of this is just to kind of give you my side of things. And it is supposed to also be enjoyable and fun. So I hope you've had fun. I have had fun doing this for you and I can't wait to see you again.